أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كدأب آل فرعون والذين من قبلهم كفروا بآيات الله فأخذهم الله بذنوبهم إن الله قوي شديد العقاب ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم وأن الله سميع عليم صدق الله العظيم In all the Madani Surahs that we have already studied, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Ibran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Maida, there were addresses to the Muslims, then references and address to the Munafiqeen, and then the Bani Israel, the Jews, the people of the book. So here in this Surah also, now there is a reference to the Jews. Qadabi ala Fir'aun wa al-lazina min qablihim Like the manner of people of Fir'aun and those before him Kafaru bi ayatillah They disbelieved the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fa'akhadahum allahu bi zunubihim So Allah seized them due to their misdeeds and sins Inna Allah qawiyyum shadeed al-iqab Verily, certainly Allah is qawiy all powerful, all mighty, and he is very severe in punishment. Now this one ayah refers to all the stories of the messengers of Allah that appeared in Surah Al-A'raf. But making more apparent reference towards Ali Fir'aun. But actually, the people of Nuh, the people of Hu, the people of Saleh, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to whom Hadrat Lut was sent, then people of Shaib, and then Ali Fir'aun. But because this Ali Fir'aun really, they had special relationship with the Jews, because the Jews were persecuted by them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered and saved them from their persecution. So actually now, he has been singled out, Fir'aun and his people. Qadabi Ali Fir'aun. But it actually refers to all the nations who were destroyed because they didn't accept the da'wah of the messengers of Allah who were sent to them. This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't change the favor with which he has blessed any nation. Unless they change what is in their souls. This is a very permanent law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sunnatullah. And we shall read it because, you know, Surah Al-Raad and Surah Al-Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa salam, in, this, in these two surahs, this subject will be discussed in detail. Whatever is in your souls, you have to change it. If you don't change what is within your souls, the condition will not change. And this is the biggest blunder that all the Muslim movements of today, the so-called jihadi movements, they are missing the point here. Before purifying the souls of the people, they want that the system should be changed. How can the system be changed? The inner personalities of the people should be changed first. Their thinking should change. Their value structure should change. What did Muhammad do? I am going to discuss it tomorrow in detail. What was the process of revolution? How he revolutionized the whole society and the whole country, rather the whole peninsula of Arabia. He changed the souls of the people first, their thinking, their structure, their beliefs, 
their value structure. Everything was changed. So you have to change people from within. As I quoted many a times, a couplet from our Lama Iqbal, that this Quran, when it penetrates the inner soul of a person, he is changed from within. And when the inner personality of a person changes, first of all the whole world changes for him, because now his point of view has changed. And then this is the beginning of a revolution. So this is very important. Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Again a reference to the whole history of the messengers of Allah and their nations who were doomed. They rejected, belied the revelations of their Lord as well as the miracles that were shown to them. Ayat, you know, it covers both the things. Because the teachings of the prophets, they are also ayat of Allah, revelations, ayat al-Quran. These are ayat. But also, you know, the miracles that were given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam, nine of them. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ تِسْعَ آيَاتٍ بَيَّنَاتٍ Nine clear signs were given to, and we have read them in Surah Al-Araf. قَزَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ فَاحْلَقْنَاهُمْ We destroyed them. بِذُنُوبِهِمْ Due to their sins and misdeeds. وَاغْرَقْنَا عَلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَكُلُّنْ كَانُوا ظَالِمِينَ And we drowned the people of Fir'aun. And they were the evil doers, the transgressors. In the Sharrat Dawab in the Lahi Ladina Kafam. Verily, the worst of the beasts on earth, animals on earth, are those humans who make kufr. What is kufr? I discussed it. You know, this testimony of that Allah is here, Allah is our Lord. This testimony is in our souls. Our souls testify to it. We had that firm covenant with Him. We have read it in Surah Al-A'raf. So that, you know, testimony, our souls has it in it, but we suppress it. Why? Due to our vested interests, due to our positions. We are the leaders. So they suppressed. Kufr means to, to hide something, kufr, to do away with something, to reject something. All these are the meanings of this, this word kufr. Because they have already suppressed the testimony of their nature within themselves, they are not going to believe. Whatever you do, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or whatever you do, O Muslims, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, now, the clear reference to the Jews. Because the Prophet, when he came over to Medina, it was a masterpiece of his, you know, statesmanship. If you read the book written by Montgomery Watt, Muhammad at Medina, he wrote the biography of Muhammad وسلم, in two volumes. Muhammad at Mecca, Muhammad at Medina. Although there was a trick, a very subtle, you know, trick in it. But I don't want to go into that detail. But, you know, he uses all the words of praise in English language in superlative form for Muhammad Sallallahu His statesmanship, his far sight, his understanding of the situation. And one of the things that he cites is that he immediately on reaching Medina, he concluded treaties with all the three tribes of Jews who were living round about Medina. He, you know, just had them in the, in, in, in the fold of that Misaq, Misaq of Medina. And a joint defense treaty was concluded with them. This is very important. But what happened? These people, they concluded the treaty. But secretly, they were violating it. They were sending messages to Quraysh. Come, or you, you invade, and we shall help from within. So they were doing it. Now this is the reference to these, this character of theirs. Alladina ahatta bin whom? Those of them whom, with whom you had a treaty, ahad. Summa yanqudun ahadahum. And they are breaking their treaty, their covenant. Fi kulli marratin, every time. 
whenever there is time of mischief, they don't, you know, keep their words, go back on their words. And they have no fear of Allah. And they don't care for anything. So if you find them, and if you encounter them in the battlefield, so disperse through them those who are behind them. Give them the worst punishment. So that people who are behind, who are sitting back in Medina, who are pulling the ropes, they get terrified, you know. So that is the philosophy of punishments in Islam also. The punishments in Islam, exemplary. Why? Cut off the hand. So that now theft will be eliminated from the society. In the same way, all these punishments, you know, they seem to be very, you know, for to others they call it, they are very cruel, very harsh. But actually, crime cannot be eradicated. Now it is proved. There can be no higher level of education than the level you have in America. But has this education and all this, you know, has it eradicated crime from your society? Most heinous crime is there. You can't reform this society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. In the same way, to those enemies of Allah, whomsoever you find in the battlefield, give him the severest punishment, so that it terrifies those who are sitting behind in Medina, and you know, they also get the message through them. So that they may be admonished. And they think twice before before taking any step against you. <coughs> this is also very important. Every ayah of Quran is important. Someone from some one aspect, the other from some other aspect, but every word of Allah is most important. <coughs> if you fear a treachery from any group with whom you have a tra treaty, and you are faithful. You are fulfilling the, all the conditions of your side, of the treaty, but you feel that the other party is treacherous, is not keeping its terms of treaty. So throw back to them their treaty on equity basis. In the Lala Yuhibul Khainin, verily Allah doesn't like the treacherous ones. Now what's the message in this ayah? If you keep the treaty intact <coughs> and take any step against that, that, that group or, or nation or tribe, this is treacherous. If you want and you decide that you have to take some action against them, first of all declare that no treaty between you and us now. This is the character of the Muslims. Not treachery. Having a treaty legally and under the table fighting each other. This behave, behoves of non-Muslims, but not of Muslims. Whenever you have a treaty and you feel that the other party is not keeping the treaty, but also not declaring that the treaty is finished, but you, before taking any step against them, you must declare that now this treaty stands annulled. Then you take this step. And and these people who have rejected the faith, because the Jews rejected the faith, although they knew Muhammad Sallallahu was the Prophet of Allah, we have read it so many times. So they rejected, knowingly. They don't think they will escape. In They are not going to overcome or outwit or outdo Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Makrullah, you know, they can't keep them safe from that. Waidu lahum mastata'atum. And O believers, keep ready with you. Aidu lahum, prepare against them. Mastata'atum, min kuwatin. All the force that you can gather, which is in your power. Now this is, this appears to be somewhat contradictory. You have faith in Allah. So Allah will look after everything. Allah will take care of it. No. You have to do whatever you can. You don't leave any stone unturned. You have to do whatever you can do. Then have faith in Allah. There is a very beautiful incident of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. A Bedouin came to see him. And you know he 
didn't tie the knee of the she camel he was riding, just left her as uh, free and stepped into the mosque to meet the, the Prophet And he asked, why didn't you tie the leg, the knee of the she camel? He said, I, I, I have faith in Allah. I have trust in Allah. The Prophet said, no, go back. Aqilha, summa tawakkal. Go and tie the knee and then have faith in Allah and confidence in Allah. Whatever you can do, you have to do. But don't think that you can do anything only through your own power or your own, you know, endeavors. Blessings of Allah are required. Finally, everything rests with Him. His decision, you know, that will be implemented. And also the steeds of war. Today, you know, the tanks you should have, the, 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 all the things, you know, everything you must have with you, as much as you can. And here let me mention, the atomic capability is a very big blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Pakistan. And these people are very fearful, lest we can prepare and we explode an atomic bomb. Although they have it, they say, this is an exclusive right of ours, we can have it. We are mature enough. You know, we won't misuse it. But you are not dependable people. You, you may misuse it. So that is actually, we are not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we shall be brought to the book. We gave you this capability. And this capability came to Pakistan miraculously. We couldn't get it. It was from Allah's grace that we got it. But you know, all the pressure on that country, that you stop it, you cap it, you, you know, take it, roll it back, and so on. It's going on. But Allah's command is different. Whatever you can do, you must prepare and you must keep ready. So that you terrorize with this thing. The enemies of Allah, and, and your enemies. Your enemies are Allah's enemies. Allah's enemies are your enemies. You are with Allah. Allah, Allah is with you. And there are others beside them whom you don't know, Allah knows. You have a fifth columnist, you know, people here in your society. Then they will see that Muslims are very ready. Then they will also be terrorized. And they won't be able to take any courage against you, to show any courage and take any action against you. So you have to remain prepared and gather whatever force of whatever kind is possible, you must have at your disposal. And because for this preparation you need money, you need funds, you need finances. For that the encouragement. Whatever you will spend in the way of Allah to procure all these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you fully, reward you fully. You are failekum. It will be repaid you in full, full. Vantum la tuslamun, and you will not be wronged. Vain janahul is salm fanjahalaha. And if these people, if they incline to peace, fanjahalaha, you also incline. Because if they want a peace, I'll okay, have peace with them. And have a treaty with them. And then you have faith in Allah that if they are making this treaty dishonestly, they want to do something else, Allah will take care of them. But if you feel that they are going to do something wrong, then first of all, you throw the treaty on their faces and then only you can take this step. Your moral level must be much, much higher, must be much higher than their moral level. It will be, should be visible to the people. What's the moral level of the Muslims and what's the moral level of these Jews and the, and the Mushrikeen of Makkah? The same thing which I have already said. If they intend to deceive you, find the hasbat Allah. So then Allah is sufficient for you. He will take care of them all. It is He. Jalla Jalaluhu Wabba Nawalu. It is He who has strengthened you with his own help and with the Muslims. He has provided you these companions. He has provided you these volunteers who are ready to sacrifice everything, who are trying, who are ready to lay down their lives. 
who cherish death in the way of Allah. Shahadat hai matloob wa maqsood hai mu'min. Na maale ghanimat na kishwar kushai. Whom have you had given you these people? Allah has given you. So Allah helps you directly. And this is Allah's help which has come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through these companions, these fellows, your helpers. Because what happened to Moses, we have read in Surah Al-Maidah. When he called upon his people, now go and fight for the cause of Allah, they said, clearly replied, no, we are not going to move. فَقَبَلْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِ لَا إِنَّا هَاؤُنَا قَعِدُونَ We are sitting here. You go and take your Lord with you. And take your staff also with you. And go and drive them out from this country. And then we shall only enter this country. But Muhammad Sassam got the companions who were ready to lay down their lives. وَإِن يُرِيدُوا وَيَخْدَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَزْبَكَ اللَّهِ هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَسْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And another special favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done on you. He has brought the hearts of your companions together, united them. They are more than real brothers. وَلَوَ الْفَقْرَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ had you spent all the wealth that is in this world, you could not have united their hearts. Iman has united them. Bunyanu Marsus. Now they are like a reinforced structure. No breach, no dispute. No money could have brought about that type of unity which Iman has brought. It is Allah who has united their hearts. Innahu Azizun Hakim, verily, He is all powerful and He is all wise. Ya ayyuhal Nabi Hasbuk Allah, wa mani tabaka min al-mu'mineen. O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for you, Allah is sufficient. And for those also who are following you. Now this ayah can be translated in two ways. Allah is sufficient for you also and for your followers also. And Allah and your followers are sufficient for you. The second meaning is more, you know, according to the text. Because we found in the former ayah, هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بَجَسْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened you with his own help and with these moments, with these people. So in the same way, Ya ayyuh nabiyu hasbuk Allah wa mani tabaka anil mu'mineen. For you, Allah and these believers who are following you, they are sufficient. Don't fear anything. Ya ayyuh nabiyu harrad il mu'mineen ala al-qital. O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, exhort the believers to go to war in the vikas of Allah, in the way of Allah. In yakum minkum ishroona sabirun, if there will be from amongst you twenty persevering Muslims, yaglibu meyatain, they will overpower two hundred. One to ten. When yakum minkum meyatun, and if there will be one hundred, yaglibu alfan, they will be victorious over one thousand. من الذين كفروا from among those who have rejected the faith and who have suppressed the testimony of their own souls also they are now common lie of kahoon because they are the people who they don't understand the 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 understanding of the realities of this universe enhances your power when you know everything is in the hand of Allah nobody can harm me anything now your courage you know and a person again, he thinks he can do me something. He can harm me. He can bring some bad thing to me. Well, he will be fearing anybody, everybody. He will be always fearing. And the person who knows, nobody can do any harm to me. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Na asaba bin musibatin illa bi iznillah. No harm can come to me. They might try their best. They can't do me any harm. Now your courage, your fearlessness, this cannot be measured. So because they don't know it, this is the truth that they don't know. That nothing can be can can be done without the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Kullu yusibana illa ma katab Allahu lana. In the next surah we shall read it. 
Dead here in the way of Allah, and you enter directly to the heaven. You don't have to wait for the day of judgment. These shohada who lay down their lives in the way of Allah, they go direct. They will not be waiting for the day of judgment to come. They go direct. So how now? What thing can you know can terrorize a Muslim or a Muslim who is a true believer? يا أيها النبي حمد المؤمنين على القتال إن يكون منكم شرنا صابرون يغلبوا مئتين وإن يكون منكم مئة يغلبوا ألف من الذين كفروا بأنهم قوم لا يفقهون الآن خف الله عنكم now Allah سبحانه وتعالى has lightened it for you وعلم أن فيكم ضعفا and he knows that now a weakness has started within you why you know in the early days of the Madani period There were no munafiqin, but now, as time passed, this element started growing. So that was a sort of weakness, because you know, after all, they were legal Muslims. They were included as Muslims. I told you many a time that nowhere in the Quran the munafiqin had been addressed as "Ya yu al-ladin nafaku," "Ya yu al-munafiku." You don't find these words because they were also legal Muslims. Whenever something is said to the munafiqin, ya yu ladin amanu, these are the words because they also profess to believe. So actually, secondly, you know, the depth of commitment of those people who came from Mecca, who had undergone all the hardships, who had passed so many examinations and tests and trials and tribulations, you know, the depth of conviction with them it is unimaginable. But the Ansar of Madina. Because they had not passed through such tests and trials and tribulations, so that was not the case. They were not equal to the Muhajirin. So now, as time passes, you know, taken collectively, the whole community, the average would go down. Although, you know, as Sabiqul and Walun, they remain at that level. They don't go down. But you know, taken the community as a whole, the average will come down. That is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says. الآن خف الله عنكم وعلم أن فيكم ضعفا. He knows that there is a weakness among you. فإن يكون منكم مئة تون صابرة تون يغلبوا مئة تين. If you are from you, there are hundred who are persevering. They will overcome two hundred. فإن يكون منكم ألف يغلبوا ألفين. And if from you there are one thousand, they will overcome. Two thousand, based on Allah, with the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allahu Maasabirin, and Allah is with the the preserving people who who are persevering and who are steadfast. Ma kala al Nabiyyin an yakuna lahu asra. Now this is a very sensitive issue which is being discussed here. You know, after the Muslims had won the Battle of Badr. I told you, seventy Muslims were killed. From among the Muslims, only fourteen, thirteen on the spot, and one was injured, and he died on way back to Medina. The total toll from Muslim side was fourteen. The Kufar, Quraysh, seventy. Another seventy were taken prisoners, captives. Now this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so to say, using the Uh, most, you know, lenient words. He was displeased with it. Why did you do it? You shouldn't have taken them captives, because the the power of kufr has not been, you know, broken up till now. If you have taken them captives, they will pay some ransom money, and they'll go back, and they go back. They will again be able to come to fight against you. So actually, there was a dispute because the Prophet ﷺ he consulted his companions what we should do with them. 
his own inclination because he was rauf and rahim he was very lenient very kind to kill them it was something you know against his nature so he was inclined towards taking them captive and you know releasing them taking some money and so on abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu agreed with him yes this we should do but umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was very much against it no we should kill them all so that you know this strength of kufr is initiated it is broken their back should be broken and he went to the extent that whosoever is closest in relation to any mushrik captive from among the muslims he should assassinate with his own hands his closest relative who has come here who came here to fight against the muslims and who has been taken into captive but you know later on it was decided no we shall keep them as captives and we shall accept the ransom money and then we shall set them free but allah subhanahu wa taala is declare him this pleasure over this decision and this is one of those events about which it is said al haqq yantiq ala lisan umar kana ra'yuhu muwafiqan bil wahy wal kitab that we should say wahi ke muwafiqan bi ra'yihi kana al wahy muwafiqan bi ra'yihi wahi ke in agreement with his opinion so this is the special station uh, place and you know kader and level of hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala al haqq yantiq ala lisan umar ashadduhum fi amri llah umar ma kana lin nabiyyin an yakuna lahu asra it's not befitting for a, for a prophet that there should be captives for him hatta yusqina fil ard until there is sound crashing crashing and threshing of the kufr in the land to read on arar of dunya you intend to get the wealth of this world then some money that appears to be very attractive to you very harsh comments it was actually not that the prophet wanted some money or some wealth it was out of mercy out of leniency that was the second second nature of it twice in the quran allah subhanahu wa taala has addressed him be harsh to these munafiqin be harsh you shouldn't be kind to these people but because it was his nature second nature as we call it ya ayyu nabiyyu jahid al kuffar wal munafiqin wa ghulus alaihim you should not be lenient to these people you should be harsh you have to treat them with harshness so that the back of kufr is broken if you are lenient they get you know some extension they are fresh lease of existence they are having due to your leniency hatta yusqala fil turidu turidu arad ad dunya wallahu yurid al akhirah yana allah subhanahu wa taala intends akhira for you wallahu alidul hakim and allah is all powerful all mighty and all wise laula kitabu min allah sabaka had it not been for the ordinance from allah subhanahu wa taala that had already gone before and this refers to ayah number 4 of surah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which you find in the 26th part of the musaf there it was given an option that whenever the strength of the kufr has been broken then you can keep take take captives now please ponder over it whether the back of kufr has been broken or not it's a judgment maybe i think it has been broken you think it has not been broken if it has been broken according to my assessment then we can have captives if it is not broken up till now according to your judgment then you will say no captives allah has not granted us to have captives before the back of the kufr has been broken thoroughly so because this is the principle in ijtihad al mujtahid al mukhti he also is rewarded he cannot be punished 
المشتحد المصیب ہی جسٹ ڈبل ریوارڈ سو اٹ واز ٹیکن ٹو بی این اجتہاد آف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ ابو بکر رضی اللہ عنہ دیٹ یو نو ایکچولی دی دی پاور آف کفر ہیز بین بروکن سو ناؤ وی کین ٹیک دی کیپٹو بٹ اللہ ڈس اگریڈ ود دی اجتہاد بٹ یو کانٹ پنش اینی بڈی آن اجتہاد وین اٹ واز دیئر سنسیئر اوپینین when allah subhanahu wa taala only declared his disagreement with ijtihad you can differ from a mujtahid in his, in his judgment no doubt but you know in ijtihad which has been done most sincerely earnestly you know even if it is wrong allah subhanahu wa taala rewards it for rewards for it so that is the case laula kitabu min allah sabaqa this option had been given to you from allah subhanahu wa taala already in ayah number 4 of surah muhammad If that had not happened, لَمَسَّكُمْ فِي مَا أَخَسْتُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Then what you have taken from them, on that a very mighty chastisement, a very mighty punishment would have come to you. Very stern warning. فَقُلُوا مِمَّا غَنِمْتُمْ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا So now you eat from whatever you have from the spoils of the war. Now what has been happened to the spoils of the war? the spoils all the things that they had at the battle field and now the spoils coming out of the ransom money of these captives this is added to those spoils fakulu bima ghanimtum although allah declared his disagreement with this decision but because it was an ishtihad and the option was given by him so now whatever you have got you can eat it you can use it you can consume it halalan tayyiba It is permissible for you, it is good for you. But taqullaha inna Allah ghafurur rahim. Hai taqwa of Allah. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. Ya ayuhal nabiyu qulliban fi yadikum minal asra. O Prophet, say to these people who are in your hands from among the captives. In yalami allahu fi qulubikum khairan. If Allah knows And if Allah finds that in, within your hearts there is some good, He will give you better and more than what has been taken from you. Now please keep one point in mind. Some of the people of Quraysh who had come to fight against the Muslims at Badr, they were forced to do it because of the tribal system. They didn't want to go to war against the Muslims. There could be someone who had hidden in their hearts the Iman, the faith also. But because they had not declared it there, had they declared it, they would have had to make the migration, the Hijrah. So because they were not so much, you know, motivated by Iman, that they were ready to leave their homes and hearts and, you know, the land of their ancestors, where the ancestors were lying buried. So that was... Not the depth of conviction was not up to the that level. So they remained at Makkah. When they remained at Makkah, they had to come under the tribal system. Now because the tribe is going to fight against somebody, some enemy, you have to go. So there were certain people, you know. And according to some traditions, perhaps Hazrat Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad Sallallahu was also among them. So and, and there could be other, others also. So Now, if Allah knows that they, in your hearts there is something good, but because you have not up till now declared your iman, you came to fight the Muslims along with the kuffar, so law will take its course. You will be treated at par with other, the unbeliever captives, and you will have to pay the ransom. But Allah will reward you, Allah will repay you in His own ways. He will compensate. Ya ayyuh nabiyyu qul le man fi aydikum min al-asra in yalami allahu fi qulubikum khairan yotikum khairan mimma ukhidam minkum But his prayers are very vast. He can compensate to you in many other forms. Wa yaghfir lakum and he will forgive you. Wallahu ghafuru rahim and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Wa in yuridu khayanataka And if somebody now says that I am Muslim I came only because I was forced to come here So please forgive me and let me go scot-free. When you read your khayana, then you have to say, Khanullah bin Qabl. 
they have committed, you know, treachery with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. If somebody is making treachery, he is treacherous in his behavior. Fam kana minkum, so Allah has gave you, has given you power over them. Allahu alimul hakeem. And verily, he is all-knowing, all-wise. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَادِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَوا وَنَصَرُوا أُولَائِكَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ Verily and certainly those who came to believe وَهَاجَرُوا and who migrated وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَادِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they strived in the way of Allah to their utmost, with their belongings and their lives. وَالَّذِينَ آوَوْا وَنَصَرُوا And those who gave them refuge and helped them. Now the Muslim society up till, ta up till that time, you know, it was composed of two distinct parts at Medina. Wahajirin and the Ansar of Medina. And although Muhammad Wasallam had made them brothers, one from the Wahajirin, the other from Ansar, and they were declared as brothers. And you know, they divided their homes, they divided their shops. Even, you know, one Ansari, he took his Wahajir brother to his house. He had two wives. He said, you select which one you like, because, you know, the, the commandments about hijab, they have not been revealed up till now. They were going to be revealed Several years later, in Surah Al-Nur and Surah Al-Ahzab, so there was no, no, you know, wheeling and no, the, all these uh, things, you know, segregation, etc. It was a mixed society. So he took the brother to the home, I have two wives, you select, I will divorce her so that you can marry her. Because the Prophet has declared that you are my brother and I can't, you know, bear that you live without a wife, and I have two wives with me. So that was the bond of friendship. But still, you know, these were the two distinctly separate sections of this society. And Quran is also mentioned in as separately. And here, you know, the level is different, because those people who had migrated, left their families and homes and everything behind, you know, they were definitely of a, at a very higher level of the regarding the depth of commitment, regarding their love for Allah. Then, and actually, before the Battle of Badr, the eighth expedition, which I shall explain, inshallah, next Friday evening when I go into details of Ghazwai Badr, the Prophet sent only the Muhajirin in eight expeditions. Badr was the first expedition in which Ansar were also included. They were never asked to go out to, to fight in the way of Allah. All the eight expeditions, four of them, Saraya, in which the Prophet didn't go himself, only some groups were sent. And four of them, Ghazawat, in which the Prophet also participated. But in all eight of them, nobody, no Ansari from Medina was included. So that is why these words are coming from the Muhajirs here. In the Lazina Amanu. وَحَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَانْفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Up till now only they were striving and they were fighting for the cause of Allah, going out, you know, to meet the enemy. وَالَّذِينَ آوَوْا وَنَسَرُوا Now the second section is who gave them the refuge, who accommodated them in their homes and businesses, etc., etc. And they were the Ansar, they helped them. بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ Now they are friends to each other. They are protectors of each other. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَّمْ يُحَاجِرُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءِ And as for those who, who had Iman, who said the shahada, أَشَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَّهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They became Muslim, but they didn't immigrate. They didn't come. We have read these things in much detail in Surah Al-Nisa. This discussion, you know, this subject has been discussed. But Surah Al-Nisa was going to be revealed Several years later, after this, this surah, this as I told you was revealed in the second year after Hijrah, just after the Battle of Badr. Surah An-Nisa, that was either in the fifth or the sixth year after Hijrah. So here is the first pronouncement regarding this. 
والذين امنوا ولم يهاجروا ما لكم من ولايتهم من شيء دو دو فيو هو كم تو بيليف هو اكسبت دي فيث بس دي دونت ايميجريت تو مدينه there is no you are not responsible for their protection in anything until they immigrate wa in istansarukum fi din fa alaykum an nas but if they they want that they ask for your help it's incumbent upon you that you help them but there is an exception illa ala qaumin bainakum wa bainahum misaq except against the nation or tribe with whom you have a treaty for example you know you know there are some muslims in some tribe they are they are being persecuted they call the muslims to help now there are two conditions possible if this this tribe has no treaty with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the muhammad has not concluded any treaty against this tribe or with this tribe then you can take an action helping the muslims of that tribe but if you have a treaty with that tribe now you are barred from it now you can't help although they are muslims although they want your help although they you know are asking for your help but because they have not immigrated why have they stayed back when they have stayed back they have not immigrated they lose the right that they must be protected okay if the tribe has no treaty actually then the help can be given but not if you have a treaty with them wa in istansarukum fi din fa alaykum an nas illa ala qaumin bainakum wa bainahum misaq wallahu bima ta'maluna basir and whatever ever you are doing and i seeing it wal ladina kafaru ba'dhum awliya wa ba'd as for those who have rejected the faith who have suppressed the testimony of their souls and belied what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was conveying to them ba'dhum awliya they are friends and protectors to each other illa tafalu wa takun fitnatun fil ardh wa fasadun kabir if you don't do this there will be much disturbance in the in the land what does it mean if you do if you ignore the treaty and go to help the muslims of that tribe while you had the treaty with the tribe but it is going to disturb the things the system has to be kept if you have made a treaty you can't help the muslims over there you have to do it now this aya last but one but this completes the definition of a true mu'min والذين امنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله والذين ابوا ونصروا اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم and those who accepted the faith who responded positively to the call of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then they immigrated they left their homes and hearts and the land of their ancestors وجاهدوا في سبيل الله and they strived in the way in the way of allah wallazina aba wa nasaru and those who gave them refuge and and they helped them ulaika humul mu'minuna haqqa they are the true mu'mins lahum maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem for them is the maghfira the pardoning the forgiving and a very honorable provision in the hereafter now you look refer to the ayah number 2 and 3 ayah number 2 and 3 of this surah innama al mu'minun allazina idha dhukira allah wajilat qulubuhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun allazina yuqimun as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem والذين امنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله والذين اعوضوا ونصروا اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم and this is to which i was referring as three dimensions of the personality of mu'min one is the internal esoteric element iman khashiya fear of allah fear of standing before him on the day of judgment اما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى when allah is remembered or mentioned their hearts tremble and when the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited unto them this increases them in faith 
their level of yaqeen and their level of conviction increases. So that is one aspect. The second aspect and the third, they are outside, outward behavior. But one outward behavior is, وَيُقِيمُ السَّلَاةَ وَبْنُهَا رَضْلَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Establishing the prayer. And they are spending. But whatever we have provided them with, they are spending for the cause of Allah, for making the deen of Allah supreme, for spreading the message of Allah. This is one. And the other, obvious external side of the, the third dimension, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَوا وَنَسَرُوا أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ So these are the three dimensions of the personality of a Mu'min. And if you want one ayah embracing all them, that is the ayah number 14 of Surah Al-Hujrat. In ayah number 13 in Surah Al-Hujrat, a distinction is made between Muslim and Mu'min. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ خُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ These Bedouins are claiming that we have come to believe. Tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have not at all come to believe. Don't be mistaken. Only what you can say is that you have come, become Muslims. You have submitted. You have surrendered. And the true faith, true Iman, لَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ has not as yet entered your hearts. Now with this background, a comprehensive definition of a Mu'min comes in the next ayah, ayah number 15 of Surah Al-Hujrat. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا This is the internal. They have the conviction, not only profession, not only saying with the tongue. Then they have no doubt. They believe in Allah and His Messenger. And they have no doubts about it. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنْفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And the second, and they, and they strive hard in the way of Allah with their belongings and lives. So a comprehensive, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنْفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ السَّابِقُونَ Only such people are true if they claim to be true believers, real believers. Here we find, you know, one part of it in the very beginning, the other part of it at the end. But the beauty, you know, there also in the beginning also, first I have was something else. Yes, Aluna Kanin Al-Fal, a legal question. In the same way, the last ayah of this surah is also something relating to a legal point. There was also second or three ayah, third ayah, and here also last but one. Now the last ayah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْ بَعْدُ وَحَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا مَعَهُمْ فَمُلَائِكَ مِنْهُمْ Whosoever now will believe after that, this was the beginning of the Muslim society at Medina, comprising of two parts. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَحَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آوَوْا وَنَسَرُوا Now later on, who are now believing, later on, till the end of this world, this ayah will cover forever. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْ بَعْدُ وَحَجَرُوا And now whosoever will come to believe after that, and if they also make hijrah, وَجَاهَدُوا مَعَكُمْ And if they also strive hard for the cause of Allah with you, فَأُولَائِكَ مِنْكُمْ They will be a part and parcel of your own society. They will also become a part and parcel. They will be from you. But, وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ وَأُولَا بِبَعْضِهُمْ the blood relations will remain nearer to each other. You know, this relation of Iman is not going to cover the law, Islamic law. Inheritance won't go to a brother whom the Prophet declared to be a brother. Of an Ansari, a Muhajir is a brother, but inheritance won't go to him. That is, you know, the legal issue. Yeah, they are brothers, you are brothers, you must love each other. More than the real brothers. But the law will take the precedence. And وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُكُمْ وَأُولَا بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And this word kitab usually comes in Quran for the legal structure of Islam. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ You know, kitaban. حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْكِتَابُ أَجَلَهُ So all these words, you know, in different places. Kitab mostly refers to 
the legal teachings of Quran. As regards the legal structure, Ulul Arham Ibadum Aulam Ibadum. Now these relatives, they are closer to each other. These blood relations, the womb relation of the wombs of the mothers. You are brothers because you are born of the same mother. But you are brothers because you are also Muslim, he is also Muslim. You are a Mahajir and he is a Ansari. But this brothership is something else. That brothership is something else. Verily, Allah knows everything. He is aware of everything. Here this surah ends. Now let me give you, in the few minutes that are left, some basic things about Surah At-Tawbah. Surah At-Tawbah, as I told you in the beginning, when I, when I was giving you the introductory remarks about Surah Al-Anfal, this Surah Al-Mubarakah, is the last, at least, of the long Madani Surahs. There are smaller Madani Surahs. For example, we shall find ten of them, starting from Surah Al-Hadid to Surah Al-Tahreem. There are ten Surahs, Madani Surahs, but they are small. Two sections, three sections, only one has four sections. The long Surahs, Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Maidah, Al-Fal also, because ten sections. Then we have Surah Al-Nur, there's also some, but you know, nine sections perhaps, and again Surah al -Hazab. But you know, the last to be revealed among these large Madani Surahs is Surah Al-Tawbah. But you know, the difficulty the most of the translators have faced, and some of the interpreters and the Mufassirin of our time, they are mistaken. They don't know that, you know, there is a division of the ayat of this surah regarding the time of the revelation. This surah consists of three parts. Ayat, first six ayat, one to six, and then twenty-five to thirty-seven. They were revealed near the end of the ninth year after Hijrah, just before the pilgrimage, when the Prophet ﷺ had sent already people from Medina, 300 of them, they left Medina as a, as a caravan. And Hazrat Abu Bakr who was made the chief of that caravan. The Prophet himself was not accompanying. He went for the first time and the last time next year, that is the tenth year after Hijrah. So that caravan of Hajj had, had departed. At that time, these ayat 1 to 6 and 25 to 37 were revealed. Then, from 7 to 24, they were revealed much earlier, more than a year earlier, before the victory of Badr, and it was in the eighth year after Hijrah, victory of Makkah, in the eighth year after Hijrah. So these two sections, comprising of Ayah 7 to 24, they were revealed before the victory of Makkah. The rest of the Surah, from 38th Ayat till the end, this was revealed during the period extending from Rajab to the Qada of Sun 9, year 9 after Hijrah. When, number one, preparation was being made for this battle of and, and journey of Tabuk. Then the journey towards Tabuk. Then the stay at Tabuk. Then the coming back from Tabuk to Medina. And some ayat after arrival in Medina. This is a long period, a few months, from Rajab to the to Zikada. And that is, you know, the, the time of revelation of ayat number 38 to the end of the surah. So I wanted to give you this analysis only, and tomorrow, inshallah, we shall study the surah at Tawbah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 
2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.